Welcome to Beyond the Reiki Gateway with Reiki Masters Kathleen Johnson and Andrea Kennedy. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you through donations. Links to help support our all-volunteer effort are in the show notes and also on our website, beyondthereikigateway.com. And now it is time to begin our journey together, Beyond the Reiki Gateway. We are delighted that you have chosen to spend a little time with us talking about crystals for balance during the holiday season. And whether you are an experienced admirer and worker with crystals, or if you're brand new, there's no better time like the holiday season to begin your journey utilizing crystals and all they offer to help us maintain balance and bring stability and stress relief. We hope to offer you practical tips, advice, and some real-world applications that you can use in the coming weeks. Thanks, Andrea, for starting us off today. And yes, we are going to be offering some crystals that you could use for the holidays or any day, actually. But, you know, crystals are a wonderful way to keep us in balance, keep us grounded, help us relieve some stress at any time of the year. But especially these days, living through these stressful times, and now the holidays are upon us, which only adds to the stress, let's be honest. We all love the holidays, but they are stressful. So it's helpful to have a lot of tools in our toolboxes to manage that stress. And that can be done in many different ways, Reiki, meditation, taking a bath, a walk, whatever. But crystals are a wonderful way to help you in your everyday life. And it doesn't take much time and it's not complicated. So we'll be happy to share some of our experiences and our tips with you that you can start to incorporate crystals into your lives, especially now around the holidays to help you stay grounded and balanced. And I love that you brought up grounded because I know in my own Reiki practice, I know for myself, especially around the holidays, you know, grounding is always something that we need to kind of keep in the back of our mind because often we might feel scattered. We might feel like we can't focus on things and see projects through the end. We might even feel forgetful or just drained. And groundedness helps alleviate all of those situations for us. And there are so many different grounding stones out there, but I'm going to share my favorite one right off the bat, Kathleen. And I think it might be surprising to people, but it's petrified wood. And you know, technically, it isn't really a crystal. It's a fossil, and I just love petrified wood because it used to be a tree. And what happens with petrified wood is all that organic material of the wood over thousands of years gets replaced with minerals like silica, calcite, and even fool's gold. And in rare, rare specimens, opal. Isn't that amazing? And, you know, for grounding, I often will visualize a tree. And so to incorporate petrified wood into a grounding practice, I think just takes it to a whole nother level and is really effective for me. I'm glad you mentioned petrified wood, Andrea. That's one of those stones that is lesser known. And honestly, I think it's highly underrated. I have been using petrified wood for a number of years And like you, I really appreciate the fact that it used to be a tree. There's just something so wondrous about that. I look at this little piece of petrified wood and go, wow, you used to be a tree. It's just so cool. And it really makes me feel connected to Mother Earth. And one of the properties of petrified wood is, of course, it's grounding as you said, but one of the lesser known properties is that it helps with ancestral healing, family healing, and clearing family trauma and drama. I've used petrified wood in my work with clients over the years who are working through those types of issues, and they have found it to be very helpful and very comforting. So I'm really glad you brought up petrified wood. And speaking of the ancestral and family healing, I think that makes it an even better option then for working with it 
over the holidays where we're reconnecting with family members, maybe family members that we haven't seen in a long time, having memories of perhaps family members who have passed on, and again, addressing the ancestors there. I just think that that's an interesting point that you brought up. Yes, that's a really good point about it being perfect for the holidays. I mean, isn't that what holidays are all about? Family and connection. I think that's um, a really good way to look at it. I'll share just a little bit of one way that I'll use petrified wood so that others might try it if it resonates with them. I can, I'll can. i actually just sit and hold the petrified wood right in my hands and just gaze into it and just take some deep breaths and really focus on the different colors and the different properties of how the fossil looks and really just breathe and observe and allow my mind to just tune into the petrified wood. And I find that it really just calms me down. It centers me and it really helps the busyness and all of the chatter in my mind just kind of fall away. And I think that is in part because of that wisdom aspect of the tree and that long process of it turning from tree to petrified wood. But it's just something very easy anyone can do. Sit, gaze, appreciate the different properties of the stone. Just take some deep breaths and tune in. It's really that easy. Thank you for sharing that, Andrea. And you're right. It's very easy to connect with the stone in that way. And for those of you who don't have any petrified wood or, you know, are new to crystals, don't worry. There are plenty of other stones available that are great for grounding that I use honestly on a daily basis. And I have a few of them around my home and in my healing space. So some of the ones that I really like to use for grounding and balancing are, first of all, black tourmaline. It's a wonderful stone for that. And one of the great properties of black tourmaline is not only that it's grounding, but that it does deflect negativity too. that energy that we perceive as being unhealthy for us or incompatible. So that's a wonderful property for black tourmaline. And I highly recommend anyone who's interested in crystals to have a few pieces of black tourmaline in their toolbox, truly. It's sort of a basic stone for me that if you're interested in crystals, I think everyone should have some. Another wonderful grounding crystal is hematite. It has a lot of iron in it. It's very grounding. Also, smoky quartz. That's a good one. I love using smoky quartz, plus it's very pretty. Bloodstone is a good one, as is onyx. Now, I could go on and on about grounding stones. There are so many out there. But again, if you're just starting out, don't want to overwhelm you. We're going to start with just those few because there are plenty. And if you're interested in getting involved in crystals, believe me, there are plenty of resources out there for you to learn as much as you would like to learn. Do you have a certain technique that you might use, Kathleen, incorporating the different crystals, some of the ones that you just mentioned? Uh, Yes. I mean, I have my own way of using crystals for grounding, um, something as simple as what you just shared with the petrified wood. There is a particular layout I like to use for grounding, and I think this could come in handy during this season, especially this season. So I'll take a few minutes here and describe what I call a grounding crystal layout. Great. It's easy. The stones that are involved are inexpensive. They're easily found. They're all over the place. They're very common stones. And it can make such a difference in how you feel. If you feel grounded and fully present in your body and connected to the earth, or whether you're feeling kind of spacey and ready to fly off into the stratosphere, which isn't healthy. So this is a nice little layout that you can perform at home in a matter of minutes that can help you to feel very grounded. You will need two pieces of black tourmaline and then two additional pieces of any grounding stone of your choosing. I typically like to use either hematite or smoky quartz. And then you want to find a comfortable place to lie down for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. 
you want to place um, one of the stones, either the hematite or the smoky quartz, below the earth star chakra. Now the earth star chakra is about six inches below our feet and it connects us to mother earth and it keeps us very grounded to her as long as it's in balance, okay? So place one of the stones there, place another stone near your root chakra, which is located at the base of your spine. And the two black tourmaline pieces hold those one each in the palms of your hands, okay? And then all you need to do is lie there, make yourself comfortable. I'd like you to take a deep breath in. And as you take in that deep breath, feel the energy of the earth drawing in from your earth star chakra all the way up through the chakras, through the light channel, and then out through the top of your head. You can feel that magnetic energy of the earth pulling up. And on the exhale, release any pain, any tension, or any worry. And repeat that. Take a few deep breaths. Again, breathing in the energy of Mother Earth and on the out breath, releasing pain, tension, and worry. You don't have to keep up the deep breathing. Just do that a few times. And then just lie there and allow yourself to be grounded. The stones will help you to ground beautifully. And after about, I'd say 10 minutes, depending how much you need, I would say 10 minutes, maybe 15, you'll be able to notice the difference. You'll feel more present, you'll feel more centered, and you'll start to feel more balanced. And then of course, when you feel ready, I always offer an expression of gratitude. I thank the stones for their help. I thank the crystal kingdom, the mineral kingdom. And then I just get up and go about my day. So. I'd be interested to hear how this works out for you if you give it a try. And that's just one of the simple layouts you can do even on a busy day. Find a quiet place to escape for about 10 minutes and give yourself a little treat. That sounds wonderful. It really does. Thanks for that, Kathleen. Really practical and something anybody can try, really. You know, grounding, as we said, is really so important. And I think that it really applies across the board to everybody. It doesn't matter uh, how far you are along on the spiritual path. Grounding is always something to consider. Super important. We actually did talk about this before in a previous episode, and that was the episode back in March uh, called Grounding, Protection, and Clearing. Oh my. So if you want more information about grounding or those other topics, I hope you'll check out that episode if you haven't already. So Kathleen, crystals, holidays, grounding. All right, let's say we're all grounded. What other crystals might we employ through the holiday season to help us out? Well, okay, the holidays bring a lot of things into our lives, (laughs) and one of those is a feeling of being overwhelmed. I'm sure we can all relate to that. That can happen anytime, but it is especially true at this time of year. At least I know it is for me, and I imagine that it is for most of you listening as well. Fortunately, there are crystals out there that can really help with that too. The crystals that I love to use for feeling overwhelmed tend to be in the blue family. They're the blue crystals. They're very soothing. Their energy is very calming. It tends to take our feelings of overwhelm and anxiety down a couple of notches. The ones I really like to use are blue lace agate and blue kyanite. They're very good for doing that. Blue lace agate and blue kyanite are throat chakra crystals. The blue crystals generally are throat chakra crystals, and they just tend to simmer everything down, take everything down a few notches, which is very important when we're feeling overwhelmed. You can utilize these by simply wearing a little necklace of them. I have a blue lace agate necklace that I wear whenever I am teaching or sometimes when I'm recording our episodes or when I'm writing because it helps my communication. And blue lace agate helps us to release things through communication, nonverbal communication in this case, that may be making us feel overwhelmed and stuck. So it's a really nice calming stone. 
Lucayanite, you can do the same thing. If you don't have any jewelry to wear, you can always just place a piece of blue kyanite at the throat chakra area and hold it there for a few moments. Blue kyanite not only is soothing and calming, but it also has the property of balancing all the chakras. Isn't that nice? The kyanite family does that. Kyanite comes in different colors and the blue kyanite helps with balancing all the chakras. So not only will you be helping yourself to feel less overwhelmed and stressed, you will be helping to balance your chakras at the same time. That's a great application. And also, I like the idea of bringing them all in balance. I'm a shortcut person. I love things that do more than one thing, you know, multitasking at every level, I guess. But that's one reason I like that healing crystal mat that I have, because it's got different crystal stones in it. And that's kind of like my one-stop shop where I can lay down on that, turn it on, and I just have so much benefit from the different crystals. But something else that we can do is maybe place the crystals, as you've mentioned, at the throat. But the third eye is one that I like to place crystals too. And in this case for overwhelm, because it helps me see more clearly, feel more clearly, and kind of get the noise out. Because I know when I'm feeling overwhelmed, there's so much to consider, so many things in my awareness. And so to focus on the third eye for me and to meditate or use a crystal in that way, it helps me kind of cut through all that and get down to the nitty gritty, you know, to see what it is I need to focus on now. For me, it just brings more clarity. Yes, it does. I'm glad you mentioned the third eye because these stones are also very helpful for placing on the third eye. It tends to, as you said, cut the noise. That's a really good way of putting it. And also those racing thoughts we get when there is so much on our plates and we get that feeling of, I don't know where to, to go next. I don't know what to start or finish. And you feel stuck and you feel like the hamster on the wheel going round and round and round and getting nowhere. Spending a few moments with one of these really soothing crystals on your third eye can, again, lower the temperature, take it down a few notches, and help you clarify and see more clearly what you need to do and put it all in some sort of order so that you feel you can move forward with confidence. And that's incredibly helpful any time of the year. So I know I mentioned blue kyanite and blue lace agate. Some other stones that I like for this purpose are amethyst, which is a wonderful, just all around healer. Angelite is great and celestite is good. Now, angelite also has the lovely property of inviting in the angelic realm. So as you're calming yourself and achieving some kind of clarification, you're also inviting the angelic energy in the angelic realm, which is also as very soothing and calming. So they can all be of enormous help. Just like the grounding stones, there are so many stones for these kinds of issues. If you're looking for something soothing and calming, I would suggest staying with the blue stones, purple stones like amethyst is good too, but the blue stones are, I think, by far the most soothing in these types of cases. Yeah, they make me think of water, mm -hmm. calm water. Yes. Yeah, exactly. As I was listening to you, Kathleen, I was also trying to think about other sorts of challenges that we might be faced with over the holidays in particular. And from my personal experience, I can just really share, I guess, that of course, there's stress and we're getting together more. And so that's a lot of energies coming together in one space. We can maybe have some difficulties in that area. But I think the one that really is sticking out for me that came to my mind is unrealistic expectations. I know that this is an issue for myself, but still, I get caught up in that uh, year after year, I think. And I don't know what it is I'm expecting, but I often have a tinge of, you know, feeling a letdown around the holidays. And I wonder if you have some advice about that, the unrealistic expectations. 
That is a wonderful observation because I think that is something we all experience to one extent or another, honestly, especially around the holidays, because let's just think about what this means. Last year, most of the holiday gatherings were at best very limited. They were being discouraged. So we didn't really have to deal with a lot of that. This year is a little more open, thank goodness. But when we get together with people, especially under these circumstances where we may not have seen family members for a year and a half or longer, it can be very stressful because just because someone's a family member doesn't mean you get along with them or there is a whole lot of, you know, camaraderie there. We can have difficulties with family members. Families are complicated. So we set ourselves up for the holidays saying, oh, it's going to be great. I haven't seen everybody. It's going to be wonderful to get together. And then you all get together and it's like, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> right? It's <laughs> It happens. Yeah. It happens every year. Yes. And this is why there are so many jokes about this because it's the truth. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's just no question about it. I think we've all been in that situation. But fortunately, crystals, believe it or not, can help with that as well. There are several stones that I would recommend that can really help to create harmony among family members and in large gatherings and also foster a sense of optimism. Like, okay, this is going to be unusual. I'm not used to having all these people around me, but I know it'll be fine. If you start to go into it with that intention that everything is going to be fine, there's a few crystals I like for that. And one of my very favorite is called peach selenite. Now, many of you who work with crystals may be familiar with selenite as the translucent white stone. It's beautiful. But I'm talking about peach selenite. Sometimes it's known as orange selenite. It's kind of a peachy orange color. It is such a sweet, soothing energy. It balances the emotions, which is incredibly helpful. I've used this stone a lot during client sessions over the years. It makes you feel calm and it provides a sense of well being. I have a rather large peach selenite sphere in my family room, which I keep there <laughs> for that very reason, because the sphere shape kind of sends its energy out in all directions because of its shape. That constant energy of calmness and well-being is always being sent into my family room area, which is where we tend to gather when I have company. It's very helpful for that. Another one is green aventurine. That's a very harmony-loving stone. It also makes you feel hopeful during kind of challenging situations. So they're really good choices for gatherings and family events and social events. I have never heard of peach selenite, Kathleen. I'm very intrigued by that. And now, you know, I've got to add that to my list of crystals to go find out there and bring back to my home. But does that have the same properties as selenite? Does it have that same sort of, I don't know, I almost think of it as like little tiny spaghetti strands, how it'll break apart in those little strands. Yes. Is the peach color similar? Yes. I don't have any raw peach selenite. You're talking about the raw stones. They have that. Those little mm -hmm. pieces that break off. Mine are all um, tumbled and shaped. But yes, the, they are the same composition, just a different color. Peach selenite has all the properties of the typical selenite that we think of, that translucent white, but it also is very emotionally balancing and harmonizing. And keep in mind that selenite is a high vibration stone, which is really nice. So mm -hmm. it taps into those higher frequency energies, which is wonderful. Right. And I also loved the fact that you shared it's a sphere mm -hmm. and how the energy goes off. It radiates like that in that spherical nature because I have a fluorite ball. And when you were talking about the soothing crystals and the blues, oh, this fluorite ball that I have, it, it reminds me of that. So calming and it's got the soft greens and the soft purples. 
and it's a sphere. And I think sometimes we might overlook the shapes of the crystals that are available out there and how the shapes can influence the energy that radiates from them. I thought that was a really great point that you made. Yes, the shape is very important. And that's something that maybe people don't realize that because the shape of the crystal kind of determines where the energy is going to be focused. You know, as you said, and I said, the sphere, it goes out in all directions, which is wonderful. The stones that have points on the end, well, the energy is going to come out those points and so on and so forth. But that is important. So when choosing a crystal, think about what you want to use it for. And if you want to place it in a room where you want that energy going out all over, then a sphere is probably your best bet. Absolutely. Now, there are other stones that I can recommend for harmony and optimism and also for maybe dealing with unrealistic expectations or even preventing unrealistic expectations. Ametrine is a lovely stone. I love ametrine. It is actually a naturally occurring blend of amethyst and citrine, and it carries the properties of both of those stones. It's one of those that is not very well known. To me, it's underrated. It's like the petrified wood. It's underrated because citrine is a lovely stone, as is amethyst. Amethyst is an all-around healer, and citrine is so good for the solar plexus. It helps increase our feelings of self-worth. It gives a boost to our self-esteem, and when you put those two together, it's just lovely. So ametrine is one I can very definitely recommend. Carnelian is another one that is great for this purpose, harmony, and dealing with any out-of-control expectations. Amazonite, and of course, citrine that I've already mentioned in terms of um, the ametrine. So that gives you a lot of places to start if you're looking to incorporate some of those types of stones into your holidays or just your daily lives. Ametrine is remarkable, as a matter of fact. Yes, that was a new one to me, but I looked it up and it's a powerhouse with all the different properties that it offers. So that's next on my list. It's going on there with the orange selenite. So thank you for that, (laughs) Kathleen. You're you're making my my Christmas list (laughs) automatically. I'm glad you said that because honestly, crystals make wonderful gifts. I have given crystals as gifts to many people over the years, and they're thrilled with them. It's such an unusual, Mm -hmm. but yet personal gift. It really is a wonderful gift. And as far as ametrine, I want to say one more thing about ametrine, and then we can move on. It's great for making crystal water. When I was teaching classes regularly in person, as I do, I would frequently put together a large pitcher of Reiki water that I have purified with Reiki and place a couple of tumbled stones of ametrine in the bottom. And because it's safe. Now, there are some stones you really shouldn't mix with water, and I'm not suggesting you should just randomly drop stones into your water. Not at all. You need to do your research before doing that. But ametrine is perfectly okay. And I used to use that in the Reiki water for my students when I was teaching. And it was always a big hit. I love Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And circling back to when you said about gifts, I have gifted crystals to my children. And what a wonderful thing for us because we can talk about the crystal. We can talk about how to use the crystal. And then they can practice using the crystals. And what better time than when they're young Mm -hmm. and open and they can have these experiences themselves and learn how the crystals might interact with them or what that energy might feel like. Um, I just think that they're wonderful gifts for children and adults too. And of course, jewelry made with crystals, that's always really popular as well, but absolutely. Oh yes. Crystals are one of my go-to gifts anymore. When I have a friend or a student or a client who has a baby, I like to give them crystal angels as baby gifts. Then they will place that angel in the child's bedroom and um, they love it or a heart shape, a nice large heart shape. 
Crystals are always a welcome gift. I mean, I guess you have to know your audience, but most of the people I know love them. It's never an issue. <laughs> Absolutely. Gift giving is really only one thing related to the holiday season. There are so many other things that we have to give our attention to, you know, food and entertaining and company. And if you're having house guests, where's everybody going to sleep and all kinds of things uh, that we have to juggle, which can really cause problems with rest, with sleeping because our minds get so busy trying to focus. We've already talked about so many things I think that could be helpful, like grounding and all of that kind of thing. But what if we really want to target a sleep problem like insomnia over the holidays or just general anxiety about it all? Anxiety is such a common ailment, if you will, anyway. Mm -hmm. it's, and again, it is exacerbated during the holidays. As you said, there's so much to be anxious about. And it gets out of hand very quickly. Once again, crystals can come to the rescue. One of my very favorite stones for anxiety, and I've used this for myself because I do deal with anxiety almost every day for myself and um, also with clients who struggle with anxiety, is lipidolite. I love lipidolite. Mm. It's a lovely purple and white kind of stone, um, the finished or the tumbled variety is. And it has naturally occurring lithium in it. So it is very balancing. Oh. Those of you who are familiar with properties of lithium probably know that it's very balancing and calming. And lipidolite has lithium naturally occurring from complements of Mother Earth. Mm. So I have several pieces of lipidolite. They're rather large palm stones and they, they are almost the size of the palm of my hand. And when I'm having difficulty sleeping, which I do, you know, I struggle with insomnia from time to time, I will place a piece of lipidolite under my pillow or even put one next to me on the nightstand or even hold it as I'm falling asleep. It promotes sleep. It promotes pleasant dreams. You know, you say sweet dreams. Well, take a piece of lipidolite to bed with you yeah. and hopefully that will happen. <laughs> It helps to calm you again. I've used that word a lot today, but my goodness, calm is so elusive during the holidays. It can soothe those nerves that get so frazzled because of all we have to deal with. And encouraging restful sleep is a wonderful gift because we need that in order to meet all the demands upon our time. Lepidolite is one of my favorites. Another one that I like, and one of these that is not very well known, is scolocyte. I have taken to using that on my nightstand as well. It's a white stone. It's great for promoting sleep, again, the dreams and all that. A couple others that are probably a little more accessible would be fluorite. Andrea mentioned her fluorite sphere. Fluorite is a wonderfully healing stone, very calming. Even the colors of it are calming. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Yeah. Moonstone. Moonstone is a lovely calming stone helping to promote sleep and reducing anxiety. And selenite. There we are with selenite again. Selenite is just a lovely stone all around. And another one I like is sodalite. It's a lovely blue and white stone. And it's also very good for calming and promoting sleep. There's quite a few that you could choose from to help you be less anxious, hopefully help you sleep a bit better, or just because you like the way they look and you're drawn to it. Sometimes that's the only reason we need when we choose a crystal, because if you're drawn to it, it's probably something that you can benefit from, truly. That's so true. And one of the things that I do, Kathleen, is I have just, I'm sure that you do too, but really shelves of crystals. And I'll look over them when I'm in a certain state of mind, or you know, maybe I'm anxious or, or scattered or whatever it might be. And I'm not sure which crystal to use. So what I might do is go stand over there and just take a couple of deep breaths and just look with my eyes and sort of scan my crystal shelf. And as I scan, there will be certain crystals that pretty much just 
pop off the shelf. They just really get my attention. It's almost like they're jumping up and down saying, me, me, me. Those are the ones that I go for. So, you know, if this is overwhelming, if you're not sure what crystal to use, it's always best to follow your intuition and listen to the energy, so to speak. You can't really get it wrong. If you're drawn to a crystal, then use that one and experiment and yeah, that's the fun of it, right? It shouldn't be drudgery no, or work. No. It should be fun. Yes, it should be fun. And it is fun as long as you get out of your own way. And the crystals will let you know if they want to work with you. That Just like Andrea described, it's almost as if one will jump up and, and wave at you. Hey, how about me? And I actually experience this every time I do a Reiki session for someone because I'm choosing crystals to use in this individual session. And I'll be scanning, you know, the possibilities. <laughs> and in my house, there's a lot of possibilities. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, there will be a couple that just go, okay, me today, can I please be it? And I go, okay, yeah, you. And it's great. It really is. <laughs> It'll let you know. They really will. Mm -hmm. So. That's kind of what happens at the store, isn't it? When you go crystal shopping. Oh, yes. I mean, some of these, oh my goodness. It's almost like you don't have a choice. It's <laughs> just right. Certain <laughs> ones are like, I'm coming with you. Right. Your, your free will is like, it's like, I have no free will anymore. I just have to do this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's just like, all right, where's the shopping exactly. card? You know, where's you my need, credit card? To... Get it out quick. <laughs> Absolutely. I understand. Yep. We have really covered a lot of specific types of issues that we might be facing around the holidays, but quite frankly, I think we relate to these at any time of year. But in general, do you have some suggestions, Kathleen, for overall emotional support? Yeah, you're right, Andrea. We've talked a lot about different specific issues that arise during the holidays, but oftentimes all we need is a broad emotional support. And for that, my go-to, my recommendation is always rose quartz. Rose quartz is known as the love stone, and that's for good reason. And I'm not talking just about romantic love, although that's included, but it involves all sorts of love, you know, filial love, friendship love, uh, paternal, maternal love, any spiritual love. It's the love stone. It is all about love and compassion and kindness and gratitude. And those emotions and feelings that truly make life worth living. Rose quartz is great for when you need just some, like a balm poured on you, poured over your energy field to make you feel better, more in balance, and to help clear any stuff that's hanging around that you don't want, any stagnant energy or just bad feelings, bad thoughts. Rose quartz can help so much. I love to use it and I use rose quartz every day. I think I, I usually have a piece of it in my pocket, which I do today, a little heart-shaped rose quartz. And I keep a piece of that in my pocket. I will sometimes wear a necklace or a pendant of it that hangs right around where my heart chakra is. So it's right there, kind of infusing my heart space with this loving energy. Then with clients, I always use rose quartz in those sessions. There's very few times when I don't. I just find it to be versatile. It's good for almost any kind of emotional burden. It will address all kinds of emotional issues. And it helps you to transcend your worries and makes you feel like everything is okay. So I can highly recommend rose quartz. Another one that is great for the heart chakra is green aventurine, which I mentioned earlier. When you use that with rose quartz, that could make a very quick but effective layout. If you take a piece of green aventurine and a piece of rose quartz and place them over your heart chakra, lie down for a few moments and just envision your heart chakra expanding and being enveloped in divine light take some deep breaths, releasing pain, tension, and worry, as I described earlier. It can really help to reset your emotional feelings and your emotional state. So rose quartz, definitely my biggest recommendation. Green aventurine running a close second. 
Beautiful. Yeah, I have to say love is the way. I just so believe that. I think it goes perfectly with the holidays, especially. But I think the answer to so much in the world is love and the vibration of love and returning to that. And I also wanted to offer one other idea. I have a few different ornaments that I put on my Christmas tree that are made out of crystals. And I'll bet you do too. That's so cool. Talk about that. I love it. Yeah. And I just think it's a great addition to the tradition of the tree. And I love to place those on the tree because they're all from Mother Earth. Although I don't use a live tree anymore, but it's very special, I think, to have the crystals there. And during the holiday season, when I have my tree up, I will just sit in the mornings and just look at the tree with the lights and That can be a meditation all by itself and be in the presence of the tree with the lights, with the crystal ornaments and the other crystals placed in the room. And meditation doesn't have to be uh, regimented or, you know, anything else. It can be just a few minutes of quiet and tuning in. I, I hope that everyone can take time out through the holiday season to connect in these ways and to use crystals and hopefully in some of the ways that we've presented this time around, which was really lovely. One final note, too, is this isn't our first episode about crystals. We've had some other ones. And if you're listening and have some questions about crystals, like how to cleanse them and utilize them in other ways, you can check out a previous episode. I believe it was called Want to Get Stoned. Is that right, Kathleen? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> so get stoned with us and re-listen to that episode or uh, discover it brand new if you haven't listened to it before. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Andrea, because yeah, in that episode, we did address a lot of questions that people have about crystals, um, some basic things, like you said, how to cleanse them, how to choose them, those kinds of things. And we do go over that. And I think it can be helpful. If you haven't heard that episode already, you may want to check it out. And if you heard it, but don't remember much about it, you may want to revisit it and see what it brings to light for you. And another thing I wanted to mention is that Andrea mentioned a little while ago about the the crystal healing mat that she uses. If you have an opportunity to check these out, you may want to consider it. It'd be a great Christmas gift for yourself. And there is a link in the show notes. I'm all for using crystals in our lives in any way we can get them because they are given to us as gifts from Mother Earth. I think it's doing her the honor of using the gifts that she has given us when we use them with respect and gratitude. And also, if you're looking for an online resource for crystals, I can very definitely recommend healingcrystals.com. And there's a link to that also in the show notes. It was the very first place I ever bought crystals online, and I've never been disappointed You may want to check that out if you're interested in purchasing some crystals for yourselves or for some gifts, as we talked about earlier. They do make wonderful gifts. Mm -hmm. They do. And with that, we are at the end of our episode regarding crystals for balance during the holidays. I really hope you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. If you have any questions or suggestions, or if you've tried any of the tips we've mentioned, we'd love to hear from you. So please reach out to us um, at our website at beyondthereikigateway.com. And in the meantime, take good care, be well, have wonderful holidays, and hopefully they'll be stress-free with the help of crystals and any other tools you may have in your toolbox. Take good care. We thank you again for joining us. And of course, we invite you to join us next time as we journey beyond the Reiki Gateway with Kathleen Johnson and Andrea Kennedy.